Hello everybody, we are back with the fifth part in the Legion set review series and today we are going to be taking a look at the Japanese cards. Uh, Japan's gotten a lot of pretty interesting cards, uh, a couple different directions that we haven't seen much support for, but also some improvements to decks that they have just normally ran. So let's start off with the b7 a2 ryusei i am probably going to butcher most of these names so apologies for that but regardless this is a two credit one operation cost two one blitz bomber and it has the text cannot attack the enemy hq this card is essentially a three credit deal two damage to an enemy unit and it's a two one uh, so if we think about it like that, it's actually very similar to something like a Nebelwerfer. The Nebelwerfer is a 2-2 artillery piece for Germany that deals one on its deployment. So comparatively, the Ryuse deals more damage up front, but is a bit more fragile overall. I think though that this is actually a bit stronger than the Nebelwerfer. Uh, one health definitely has its downside, so it won't stick around as easily, but that initial attack being able to kill off two health units, that can be quite useful against aggro. Uh, there's a good amount of two health units that the Nebelwerfer has an awkward time dealing with, which then probably kill the Nebelwerfer at the same time, while the Ryuse gets to remove it uh, and then force the enemy to have an answer for it. Uh, so... I think this is actually a pretty solid card for slower control decks, uh, just being able to have a cheap way to attack and damage the enemy uh, or kill enemy units is something that is appreciated. It's essentially cheapish removal, uh, but and because it's a unit it can be repeated. Uh, I think that control decks will probably be interested in this the most. Uh, they'll just enjoy having a cheap way to deal some damage and remove units. Uh, kind of simple, but pr I think pretty good. Next up is Dawn Operations. It is a two credit order and it says your air units operate for free this turn. Lose a credit slot. So that's quite big. Uh, being able to make all of your air units operate for free is oftentimes going to save you numerous credits and can deal a lot more damage than you normally would be able to. Uh, in Japan, however, there are a couple cards that are very good with it. Burst of Fire, which gives a fighter plus one attack and fury. This card would go excellent with a unit operating for free. Or we can also do things like Burning Sun, which gives all friendly air units plus three attack, which fits incredibly well alongside Dom Operations, essentially making it kind of a Blitzkrieg for air. It is a bit more expensive, but... Air units are also have an easier time attacking the enemy HQ, so there is potentially quite a lot of power within this archetype or in this card. Uh, the losing a credit slot doesn't seem like that much of a downside. Uh, you really won't see much of a uh, a like you won't see, I think, much of a full-on Japan air deck right now. Uh, I just don't know if there's enough, like, cheap fighters that really could abuse this. But uh, British Air runs a lot of Japanese cards, so I think Dawn Operations could probably fit quite well into that archetype. Uh, being a strong finisher alongside, you know, going off with a bunch of, like, close air supports or something like that. Uh, you know, uh, this has the potential to be very, very strong, I think. Uh, it's it, this card honestly scares me a little bit like this who i just hmm i guess we'll see i mean maybe it's strong enough to enable japan air i'm just trying to think of like what cheap air units they have and none are really coming to mind so i think british air is probably the place that i would expect to see this come out first at but i don't think it's unreasonable that you know like this is obviously going to fit into any J air deck really uh, for example, maybe uh, the U a U.S. 
Japan deck would work. US has a lot of bombers with high operation costs, so Dawn Operations lets you operate them all for free. Maybe could be something. Uh, there's, there's a lot of ways to look at this, so I think there is... It's going to see place somewhere. I mean, stuff op cheap ways to make your units operate for free always has a purpose somewhere. Uh, I guess we'll just see where it pops up and what works. Moving on from that, we have Diversion. It is a two-credit order, and it says, Give target non-guard ground unit in a support line smokescreen. Draw a card. So this is meant to be, I think... A tool to enable the Japanese smokescreen theme. Now granted, this has dubious chance of working in my opinion. And I don't think Diversion really adds that much. Uh, for two credits, it's quite a lot. It's a very conditional thing. A ground unit in the support line? Like, ooh, that is not the easiest thing to accomplish. Uh, it does draw a card itself, so there is at least some purpose there, but it seems like too much work to make, uh, to try to, like, use the, it as a reason in a smokescreen deck. I think it'd probably be better just to run actual smokescreen cards and not fiddle around with playing a unit out, playing diversion on it, and then next turn buff, you know getting the payoff for having smoke screen. So I think diversion is overall not that strong, uh, and I don't think it'll really see play. Going to our first elite, that is Rule the Skies. It is a two credit order, and it says the enemy HQ gets, if this HQ has taken three plus damage this turn, give your air units plus one attack. So this is clearly a card meant to also help enable a Japan air deck. Uh, and I think this does have some good merits to it. Rule the Skies uh, is a way to continually grow your bombers and fighters to bigger and bigger heights. Uh, you know, bombers obviously love any chance they get to buff their attack. And the important thing is, is that the units don't have to, like, you don't have to attack with specific units to get the buff. Any damage to the HQ, as long as it totals up to three on that turn, will get you the buff. So you could, for example, play an order and still get this off, you know, something like uh, the British Order Empire Strikes, I believe it is. The four credit order that deals damage equal to or deals damage to all enemies equal to the number of bombers you control, uh, and that could activate rule the skies. So I could see it. It's also quite cheap. That's a nice thing. Is that probably whatever deck you're putting this in isn't going to be hyper aggressive, so you have time to play this out and then get the benefit from it. Uh, so. Again, I think there is maybe a lack of good, cheap Japanese air units in order to really enable a deck like this, but I think Rule the Skies is on its own a pretty, in could be a pretty powerful card, uh, you know. Once you get into the mid-game, uh, buffing up bombers and in particular like ambush planes like the Zero uh, could do wonders to benefit with Rule the Skies, uh, but I think it is... I think it probably won't see play right now, uh, largely due to you have to have a Japanese main nation as the main nation, and we haven't seen any air decks really work. I don't think so. I don't think it's a bad card. I just think it lacks any proper home at the moment. Going on from that, we have Calm Before the Storm, a three-credit order that says give your units plus three plus one, and then end your turn. So this is a very interesting card. Uh, it is arguably one of the strongest... It is a very strong buff, but you aren't able to benefit from it on the same turn. So I think the best home for Calm Before the Storm is to give it 
or to play out unit a bunch of units and then play calm before the storm with your last three credits that seems to be the best uh fit for the card and i can definitely see that working uh plus three attack is a lot and it's permanent so the enemy has to deal with whatever units you buffed in order to make it work uh i think probably this could fit into a variety of different decks uh, we've seen that recently certain buffs like Naval Supply Run, which is a three credit order that says give your units plus two plus one and discard a card. Uh, we've seen that that has started seeing some play in a variety of aggro decks. And I think Calm is arguably is potentially a bit better than that, or at least goes along well with it. Um, so I could I could see this in a lot of decks. Uh, another deck I think is, ju is a... Uh, is an artillery deck because this doesn't care about what units you have it's any units so artillery can just get plus three plus one you know and that is cut pretty scary uh or bombers or anything like that so i think that there's gotta there's gotta be a home somewhere i think like Jap like jagro is like the most obvious you know and there's a lot of different variations of jagro and many of them i think could run this reasonably but there's also maybe some backline decks that this card enables more you know the redundancy of what naval supply run and calm before the storm may give you enough buffs to have this critical mass that makes japan a good ally for those uh backline decks they do have some good cheap artillery like that uh two credit one three so there is something there but yeah i think calm before the storm is a pretty strong card uh, i think it fits well into a lot of different decks uh, and it'll be interesting to see how people play their turns out and how people plan for it plan to deal with this next up the ki 43 2b otsu it is a three credit plane it operates for two it is a three three and it has the text has plus two attack on your turn if the enemy controls no air units so this is quite the powerful card the otsu is a i shouldn't say powerful card but i think this is a very interesting card uh having a five three fighter for three credits is very big and a very big threat to the enemy you know you don't like you really don't want to be hit by this ever uh and there's a lot of ways to really amp this up uh burst of fire is the first card i think many of us will think of giving this guy fury and plus one attack means that you just have you know a six attack fury for super cheap you know uh that is quite power that could be quite powerful and i think uh japan has it is also i think one of the cheapest air units that you could argue you should run in a deck which is nice for japan like because previously there many of their other air units are just very weak the otsu i think will function quite well as a as a car like it, it it'll be a good filler three drop for an air deck if you run it but i think there's also maybe the chance you could run this in some sort of aggressive deck uh for those that remember way back in the closed beta when hayabusa what when the ki 43 hayabusa uh was a three credit unit uh and it was one of the strongest cards i think in the game uh because if you let it attack you, it would deal five damage. So you absolutely had to remove it. And the Otsu kind of gives me those vibes. Granted, it doesn't have the guaranteed damage of the Hayabusa. But the Otsu potentially uh, threatens the same amount of damage if the enemy can't remove it. So maybe there is something there. And this is a good like top end threat for an aggro deck you know uh maybe alongside like the mito regiments this could be a top end threat for some very aggressive deck uh it'll remain to be seen uh but 
you know, uh, if it doesn't work out in aggro, I don't think it'll see much play right now because, like many of the Japan Air cards, it just... Japan Air, I don't think, comes together with this set. It doesn't have the tools it needs. Although it is getting nice ones, it's just not getting the right set. Next up is Shock Attack. So, we saw this in the preview season as a one-credit order, but right before, just as it got released, it was nerfed to three credits, uh, probably to avoid any balance problems that would come from it. So Shock Attack is now a three credit order that says when a friendly unit loses Smokescreen this turn, it gets plus two, plus two. So Shock Attack is a very interesting card uh, as it is quite the powerful buff, but I think at three credits it's too expensive. Um, there's not a lot of Smokescreen units and most of them are now one to two credits. Uh, in cost, and because you have to operate them also, because they have to lose the smoke screen, I think it becomes too clunky of a card. And I think now, before I thought the smoke screen deck had some serious chances to have its power as shock attack could uh, be very cheap way to get very big units very quickly, but now I think it's a bit too slow. Uh, it, if it was like two credits, I could maybe see it, you know, uh, it would still be maybe a bit expensive, but it would at least be able to come down like turn, you could use it turn three, turn four, and, you know, get a couple buffs off of it. But for three credits, ugh, it's just, I think it's too much work for the upside now. Next up is the 54th Infantry Regiment. Uh, it is a four credit Zero operation cost infantry. It is a 6-2 with smokescreen. So I think this is meant to be some sort of card for the smokescreen deck, but I don't see it. Um, that stat line seems really bad. Uh, it just doesn't... I think I think it's too fragile a card. Uh, you're going to pay four credits for a unit that has two health. Ugh. You know, and even if you buff it with something like Shock Attack, that's an 8-4, you know. Not the worst stat line, but for the amount of effort you're putting into it, like, you're seriously building your deck around that. 4 health is just not the hardest thing to remove. So, I think there's too much work that is going to go into making 54th work. And as such, I think it's mostly a draft card. Then we got Redeployment. Redeployment is a 4-credit option that has Intel 2. Uh, this is the a only Japanese card with Intel on it, but does give it some synergy with Poland, which we will talk about in the next video. Uh, and it has the, also has the text, Shuffle all cards in your hand into your deck, then draw that many cards plus 1. So, this is essentially... A way in game to mulligan your hand for something else that plus one draw that many cards plus one essentially means that you also are able to draw for the redeployment itself and I think that is a nice effect uh, the Intel is also a nice little boost uh, you know obviously gives it some synergy with like Poland but I think definitely the mulligan your hand is the biggest thing and I think there's a couple big things that it works with number one is that redeployment uh, allows you to get rid of cost increases. For example, stuff from like Black Watch or the depth charges from the British research, stuff like that will no longer permanently bind up cards and redeployment allows you to get them back. On top of that, it also allows you to fix your hand if in the mid game you find an awkward hand. For example, drawing like too many win cons. You know, some cards are. You know, like, let's say I have a hand that has, like, Last Rites and the Sheedan in it. And those cards are good, but for now, they're essentially dead because I'm not trying to kill my opponent. I'm trying to survive and do other things. So, redeployment allows me on a slower turn to shuffle it back into your, hand, into your deck and draw new cards, hopefully giving me more useful stuff. 
Uh, at four credits, it is kind of expensive, but Japan has a lot of cheap ways to pin, such as naval operation, and they also are have a lot of healing. So I think they have it is quite it will be quite easy to play redeployment in the decks that want it. Uh, and I think definitely a lot of slower decks will definitely want one or two copies of this at least in order to have some tech against uh, British control, which might help improve the matchup a good amount. I think overall a very solid addition to uh, control decks. Also has some fun synergy with something like Honey, uh, because you can play Honey out, redeploy, and then you draw, you know, seven cards and you'll gain seven health. You know, not the, you know, definitely an interesting thing, but I think that's an interesting uh, thing you can do. Uh, definitely a good card. Then we have the P1 Y2 Kasho. It is a five credit, two operation cost bomber. It is a two, three with smoke screen. And then it has the text when a friendly unit loses smoke screen, it gets plus two, plus two. So an important thing to note is that the Kasho can buff itself. Uh, making it a 4-5 when it attacks, which is quite powerful. Uh, so, that is the body ain't awful uh, if it survives, and the smokescreen means that the enemy can't reliably kill it, uh, but it essentially it is a passive form of uh, shock attack, uh, where it lasts in between turns as long as the bomber is alive, and I think that's not a bad thing, but... Again, I think that the smokescreen archetype doesn't work out because there are too few cards that have smokescreen themselves. And as such, and even then, the ones that do have smokescreens aren't exactly the most promising. Like, for example, the Kasho, you're probably not playing the Kasho until at least turn 6 or 7. So you can actually use the units in order to ditch their smokescreen. Uh... This is a similar, th you know, there is some synergy with the 54th since it has that zero operation cost, but I don't think that's really, I don't think that's consistent, and I don't think that's an exactly a very powerful uh, play. So, sadly, I think the Kasho is not the strongest of cards right now. We need to see more support for the archetype before it really gets going. Uh, moving on to our to one of my, probably my favorite Japanese card, the Nara Regiment. Uh, the Nara Regiment is a six credit, two operation cost infantry. It is a five, seven guard, and it has the text, ignore, cannot attack the enemy HQ on your units. What that essentially means is that the units that have the cannot attack the enemy HQ, such as the B7A2 Ryusei, that would normally can't attack the enemy HQ, can as long as Nara Regiment is on the field. Uh, and that is a really interesting thing uh, because being able to turn usually overstatted and pushed units into something that can only hit enemy units into things that can kill the enemy makes it a lot scarier to leave those on the board. For example, there is a lot of different artillery pieces. Uh, for example, there is that... Uh, 28 centimeter coastal howitzer which can effectively you know is a 4-3 artillery for three you know with Nara regiment that thing can start attacking the enemy face which is quite a hard hitting piece uh so i don't think sadly i don't think nara is too strong of a card like the body is definitely good also a 5-7 guard for six credits is pretty average it's maybe a little expensive seeing how Osaka Regiment has minus one attack for minus one cost, but it doesn't have that text. So I think Nara Regiment's a pretty fairly statted unit, but I just think the text is maybe a little bit too irrelevant. It's a bit too expensive uh, in order to enable it, as many of the units that operate and can't hit the HQ have a high operation cost. Uh, so I think that, at least for right now, uh, I can't see it really doing that much. But maybe I'm missing something, and the, and we're going to see a Japan control deck use this to turn a lot of their control tools into threats. Maybe that's something that will actually happen. I have my doubts on it, but, you know, maybe there's just something I'm... There's a way to build that and make it work. Definitely a really cool card, though. 
And then for our final card, it is the other Japanese elite, the Kika. Uh, a 7 credit, 3 operation cost plane, or more so a jet in this instance. Uh, it is a 6-5 plane with blitz. And has destruction, shuffle 4 kamikaze cards into your deck. Kamikaze is a 1 credit order. It is the same thing as from last rights, but it's a 1 credit order that deals 1 damage to the HQ and then draws you a card. So the Kika is essentially going to fit right into the same decks as last rights. Uh, it arguably deals more damage. as you If you can play the Kika down and then have it deal 6 to the enemy HQ and then play the 4 kamikazes, that's 10 damage in the late game. Uh, while last rights is mostly a... Uh, last rights is only 8 damage. So I think both are quite good. But... Um, and I definitely think the Kika is going to have a strong presence in the right decks. Uh, it is just a very solid and very efficient late game threat. Uh, I guess the main question comes down to what do you cut outside of like Fr Japan French resistance for this? I'm not the most well versed in it, so I'm going to leave that up to the people that know what they're talking about. But this definitely is a good card. Uh, and I expect to probably be seeing it and facing it quite a lot. So overall, I think Japan got a good set of cards, but I think they also suffer from this bloated and weak smokescreen archetype. Uh, the smokescreen archetype was looking maybe good when shock attack was one credit, but that two credit nerf I think has kind of killed, you know, these four cards, you know, the Kasho, the 54th diversion, and shock attack. I don't think any of those are going to see play, and that's a significant chunk of the cards for uh japan so that's a bit of a shame uh we also are seeing this push for like a japan air deck with dawn operations rule the skies and the otsu uh so and those aren't bad like i think these cards are good i just don't see it coming together either so i sadly think japan's mostly getting a couple good control tools in the ryusei redeployment and kika and then it's getting an aggro tool in calm before the storm and maybe the Otsu. And then Nara is just a fun little card. But overall, I sadly think Japan is going to have... Like, there's definitely a bit more variety in Japan now, which I think is everybody... I think many of us are thankful for. Japan has kind of been stuck in this either I'm going to play an, a Jagro deck or I'm going to play Japan French Resistance. So maybe we can see a little bit more uniqueness in decks, but uh, I just... I think they got kind of... They're one of the shorter ends of the stick in terms of their cards, uh, or in terms of everything they got. So, bit of a shame, but Japan's also still quite strong, getting some good cards, so it's not the end of the world. Uh, but with that said, that is it. I want to thank you so much for watching. Uh, next time is going to be the finale for this little series, uh, where we look at Fran Fran France... <laughs> Italy and Poland and I will give our reviews on there. It'll probably be the longest video in this series uh, So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like comment and subscribe uh, it is Definitely been uh, a good deal of fun actually doing these sharing my thoughts on them and uh, a bit of sad we're gonna only have one more episode of this but after we get that done we are going to move back into uh, more regular content I'm gonna continue the starter series uh, I've actually paused that because the set is so close to releasing that I want to include cards from here in that last set of German decks and use that to overall just give players a bit more of up-to-date info rather than using things that are going to be outdated like a day or two after the video comes out. And beyond that, uh, I'm also planning on doing some deck techs for uh, Legion itself. Uh, I'm going to make some fun decks and we'll see how they go. Uh, but otherwise, thank you so much for watching and have a good day.